Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about Wi-Fi 6. Not just Wi-Fi 6 though, I want to talk about Wi-Fi 6 and network attached storage. That's right, two subjects that I talk about quite a lot and even more in 2020. I want to merge into today's video to show you if and indeed how to integrate Wi-Fi 6 into your home or office environment. For those that aren't aware, Wi-Fi 6, also known as 802.11ax or Wi-Fi IAX, all kinds of different names for it, is effectively the newest generation of wireless connectivity. Now, it's not the only one that's out there, and since the good old days of standard A and N Wi-Fi, there's been loads of other attempts to create a much faster Wi-Fi system for us to integrate on all of our devices. The files are getting bigger, data consumption is getting bigger, and the speed at which we want that data is getting faster. We want it all, don't we? We want it all now. So, um, the different manufacturers of wireless products, again, the routers, the network switches, and, you know, the client devices, devices, the OEMs, the people that make the phones, the tablets, the laptops, and more, and smart TVs. All kind of tested different methods until a universal standard was agreed. And although companies like Netgear have produced different Wi-Fi routers over the last few years, particularly in their Nighthawk series, which have integrated different variations of wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi 6 has generally grown above all the others as the consensus. It arrives with support of up to 2.4 gigabits or 240 megabytes per second, all the way up to 4.8 uh, 4 gigabits, and indeed there are ideas that it can be higher too, just based on PCIe connectivity and the number of antennas and aerials working simultaneously across multiple frequencies. Now, where do you come in? Well, um, unless you've purchased a very, very, very recent mobile device, or indeed even fewer laptop devices, chances are you do not have Wi-Fi 6. You have got Wi-Fi N, A, C, lots of the different variations, all of which give you a decent enough speed, but nowhere near 2.4 or 4.8 uh, potential gigabit connection. Now, bear in mind, utilizing the LAN connectivity, standard 1 GBE right now, will only give you 100 or so megabytes. So the idea is that you could have a wireless connection that is faster than a wired connection, which is pretty impressive for a home environment, certainly. And with latest NAS generations coming out from Synology, QNAP, Buffalo, Asus Store, TerraMaster, everyone featuring 2.5 GBE and 5 GBE cable connections, the result is we can now create an environment where the NAS connected to a superior router or switch that has 2.5, 5 GBE or 10 GBE can then get fast access there and then you can communicate with Wi-Fi 6. But what I want to talk about today is a cost-effective upgrade. Now, for those that captured my upgrade of a laptop to a Wi-Fi 6, you'll know that you can get um, adapters like the Killer AX1650 that we covered in the installation guide on a previous video, a NAS Compare video. Um, it gave you the ability to add Wi-Fi 6 to uh, any laptop, really, that had been released after about 2015 or 16 that had an M2 slot inside and that adapter. But it's not the only way to upgrade. There are PCIe cards available right now from a number of different vendors that arrive at about 30 to 50 quid. Uh, and these uh, um, uh, PCIe upgrade cards allow you to turn your PC into a Wi-Fi wi 6 enabled device. But they're not just for PC. You can fit them in some NAS. This is the QNAP TS251D. And I will be installing this card inside this NAS. And my ambition is hopefully, one, that the card will be accepted by the NAS and will be compatible, and that once we've installed it, I'll be able to directly connect to this NAS using Wi-Fi 6 on my Wi-Fi 6 now-enabled laptop and do a speed test of it. So once again, this isn't me communicating with the NAS to a Wi-Fi 6 router which is connected to the NAS, although I can do that and I might still do that anyway. The primary focus of today's video is to add Wi-Fi 6 to this NAS with a PCIe card and then connect to it directly from my laptop. And if I get the sort of speed that Wi-Fi 6 promises at the top end, and this is utilizing hard drives, it's worth adding, then that's enough to work with to edit photos and video wirelessly, which is a big, big deal. And that's without a Wi-Fi 6 router in your environment, 
to really keep things moving. Now, hopefully in the course of this video, I have highlighted on screen which Wi-Fi card we're using today. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that word. There you go. Um, I could give it a go. Yitatude. There you go. Yitatude. Um, and this is the card we're going to install today. But let's do a very quick unboxing. We've got a thank you for buying our product and a warranty card. We've got a quick start installation guide, which are almost certainly is targeted at PC uh, tower users and not NAS users, so I'm not really going to need that. Um, we have a cable here to connect the USB ports on your device, and that is on a PC. For those that aren't aware, if you do install one of these cards, you do have to kind of funnel it and plug it into the, um, the power outlet of the USB port, so that might be a problem during this installation. Again, I don't know if this is going to work today. Um, next... We have got the card itself, I'll show that last. We have two antenna to install on the card and these are opposable. Again, this is two antennas and the whole point of Wi-Fi 6 cards, be they internal cards, um, PCIe cards or even the routers, is, is utilising multiple bands of 5 gigahertz frequencies. I'll, you'll learn more about that later. We have a PCIe backplane update um, that we're going to need to change out for the one on the card and we have got a driver cd which is largely useless because i don't have a disc bay we have screws there for the other backplane and even a screwdriver now again this card hopefully the price was on screen it's about 30 quid which is really really cheap to upgrade a system to pcie um uh, pcie based wi-fi 6 so even if this doesn't work today I'm still going to test this out on a PC because I do have a, an editing rig just over there. You can probably hear knocking around a video there I did about hard drives. And I'm going to test this card out on there as well. But in other words, uh, let's move forward and get this card installed inside this NAS. Um, move all that out of there. Let's, actually, I haven't even showed you the card, have I? Let's have a quick look. This is the card. Let's bring that to camera. And again, that adapter on the board is what's key here. That um, is doing all of the work. What we have is the card itself going into uh, a PCI Express times one slot. So you don't even need anything high density there. And we've got those two antenna bays there, which we are going to install those antennas. And that's how the communication is going to happen. So without further ado, I think I'm going to have to start this installation. Um, what I'm going to do is quickly cut the camera and bring the camera down slightly so you can see everything going on on the table while I work. Right, so first things first, let's get the card installed. I'm going to use that there. And the first thing we're going to do is remove this back plane for that NAS. I'm going to use my own screwdriver. Let's find out. So what do we need? We need to remove these two screws here. Um, maybe some of you have already upgraded to Wi-Fi 6. And if you are utilising it, do let me know in the comments what you think. I've been using it now on my laptop for around two weeks. And all in all, I'm pretty impressed by it, to be honest. Um, I'm getting very consistent backup speed. And given that I use two different NASs to back up a lot of my recorded footage, um, it's quite nice to have those automated backups working within this office environment. Um, just working very, very quickly indeed. So put that on there. And again, the QNAT we're using today, as mentioned, is the TS251D, and it's worth highlighting that I've already installed DSN, uh, sorry, QTS on this device already. So consequently, I should be able to boot straight into the device, but it's gonna be a question of whether the drivers are going to be available for us. Uh, so I'm just gonna remove that side panel there. And again, do make sure that you've backed up all of your data uh, before doing anything intrusive like this into a NAS system. Because by doing that, let's put that there so you can see what I'm doing, there's always that chance that you might damage a hardware component inside, and it's not about the brand, it's not about QNAP Synology, anyone. But it's just, if you're going to open up a NAS, you don't know what can happen. Not with the device, with your surrounding environment. You could have a cat that jumps on the table, you could spill a drink. And whenever you do anything as intrusive as this, you should always back up your data because you are opening the door to potential problems. Now, if we get this installed here, I can see the PCIe slot there at the top. I'm sure you guys can see that there. Move that down. Next, we've got to remove the backplane cover. 
of this card. That screw does not want to play the game. Let's have a look. Someone who clearly hates human beings put this screw in here. It does not want to play. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our two bay QNAP there with our antennas already fitted to the back of it. It's worth highlighting the part of the way through that I nearly absolutely lost my mind trying to remove a screw from the back of it. Fair play to QNAP. They put this together pretty sturdy, but that screw drove me close to madness. Um, also, it's worth highlighting that installing that card, you will not need the back plane uh, because the back plane doesn't fit inside this device. It's not designed in that way. So it's worth highlighting that if you've got this card installed, you will have that little opening there on the back, which can be dealt with in a number of ways, but it's worth highlighting that will exist. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot this QNAP up. I'm going to make my way over to the laptop screen and see if we can find this QNAP device. So what we're going to do first is connect to it on the local um, area network I'm on just to see if the card's been installed. Then if it has been installed and been recognizable, in theory, the QNAP should arrive twice on the QFinder NAS application, which means it will appear there both as the Wi-Fi 6 connection and as the standard LAN connection that I'm going to be utilizing. But let's make our way over to the screen. Right, so I've made my way to the desktop here and I've got some bad news, guys. Everything to, I'm seeing in front of me indicates that this card is not supported by the QNAP. Now, I know a number of you hearing this are probably going to say, well, what was the point of the video? A lot of the time a video like this has to exist simply because it's better to have an answer than no answer. So what I'm going to do is talk you through the test that I've done and checked while preparing this uh, second part of the video. First and foremost, I've opened up the snapshot manager there just to show that the device was on for a certain period of time. Uh, next, I went into the network and virtual switch environment, went into the interfaces, and here is where you would normally find that Wi-Fi connection. Now, uh, before anyone uh, mentions the power connector that went on this card into a traditional PC environment, it's worth highlighting that that power connector is only to support the Bluetooth connection. It's not utilized for the wireless connection. And the majority of Wi-Fi cards, I'd say the majority, pretty much all the Wi-Fi cards that arrive as network interface um, upgrades on a QNAP NAS never arrive with power connectors and there isn't a power connector available on the board. Um, it does seem increasingly likely that this card is just not supported by the QNAP system. Uh, and they do have their own Wi-Fi card as well, although it isn't Wi-Fi 6. So not to be deterred, I rebooted the system, as you can see from the alerts up there at the top. And just to double check, I removed and reinstalled the card just to make sure it wasn't the, the card may have been sitting wrong or anything like that. But no, it worked absolutely fine and the card is receiving power. It is just not being recognized by the host system. So the next step I took was to install Wireless AP, which is a card and wireless access point handling tool from QNAP. And as you can see, no access point is available. And when I tried to access it, I asked it to find an available NIC network interface card. And sadly, no card is visible. And again, the lights on the card are on, but it's not being found. So this has been a disappointing end to this video. And once again, I do apologize that the speed tests are not going to be on this piece of content. But I will be shortly after this video installing this card inside a desktop PC to show the speeds of this Wi-Fi 6 card interacting with an Asus um, RX 92U Wi-Fi 6 mesh router to test the speeds of that card. So it isn't over yet. And I'm positive that QNAP will examine the idea of Wi-Fi 6, wi 6 on a NAS and will probably release their own card. They already have a card out there in the wild in the form of the AC2600 and I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't an AX2600 before the end of the year, but who knows? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's not been the most exciting conclusion, but do let me know what you think and if you have found cards that do work that support Wi-Fi 6 and aren't already on the compatibility list, do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.